Hello, this is Kimberlyn from The Bayo Show, and today I have a guest. I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. Go ahead and tell me your name, your pronoun, and what organization you work for. Well, hi there. Thanks for having me, Kimberlyn. My name is Yakub. I go by they, them pronouns, and I work at Coleman Advocates, a part of the YMAC team, which stands for Youth Making Change. Yes, all right. And can you tell me a little bit about WiMAC? Yeah, so WiMAC is this dope program started in 1991, um, and it is a hybrid model of member-led grassroots organizing, sharp policy, budget advocacy, and deep civic engagement. Uh, we really pride ourselves. We are a student-led organization or specifically more youth-led organization. So the youth come in and tell us the issues they're either having at school, at home, in the city, and we help them find the tools to find their own solutions. And we advocate for specifically high schoolers um, with the, you know, them being at such a transitionary age, um, still trying to find their voice and attain independence and understand you know, the crazy world around them. We give them to, the tools to explore themselves in a systemic, uh, spiritual and you know, mental scope as a whole. Yes, I love that. Can you give me an example of maybe some past projects or topics that you guys have covered just to give people an idea of what you guys talk about and explore in WiMAC? Absolutely. Um, currently, we're focusing on uh, the reopening schools um, debate that's happening um, nationally. Mm -hmm. um, and we created this um, specifically retained information from our youth, our parents, um, and our mini Mackers, we call them our CMAC team, our children making a change, <laughs> our middle schoolers and elementary schoolers. That's cute. And we created an equity framework based off all of their responses, and the youth have been leading the charge, um, going to Board of Education meetings, advocating for themselves, um, speaking up. Um, I don't know if you've heard of like the Lowell, issue, the Lowell High School issue that's been happening. We have one of our fellows right now. There was a, a huge uh, racial inequity issue. Mm. Um, uh, students were... We, it was believed that a student um, had said some very, very anti-discriminatory uh, things, um, racist against black people, um, very anti-Semitic issues, and the BSU has been taking the charge. And we have one of our fellows um, going to board of ed meetings and speaking up and making her, you know, her stance and her point. Um, and we have a plethora of other programs too. We do citywide, uh, bi-weekly, and it's completely youth-led. And the youth create conversational spaces to talk with themselves and. Um, you know, host kind of a, a place to rant, but also a place to create solutions. We're not, we don't just sit here, the youth don't just sit there and sit on their hands. They, they create their own solutions based off their own conversation in their own minds. They inspire us, to be honest. Yeah. I, just, I get paid to be inspired. <laughs> I love that. That's how I feel too. I love working with youth. And I specifically, like, I understand WiMAC and, um, and like the, the work to make the world a better place um, and the and the work to like inspire kids to stand in their power in the face of oppression right so even though you might be a young person facing ageism right not being able to like be fully independent not getting a lot of agency over yourself your circumstances your communities there's still an impact you can have when you're being mistreated or when you're not being heard and it sounds like WiMAC is a place where you can be heard, students can talk about the crap that's happening or, or things that don't feel good or are unjust or are holding them back, and then also get support to address those things in the community. Is that right? Absolutely. Um, you, you hit it right on the nose. Uh, WiMAC is a place of inspiration. It creates, we're trying to create, you know, sustainable and evolutionary change. And the youth are doing that within their own agency and in their own power. I think yeah. as a youth, when I was, you know, in high school, I had this mentality that I could I could change the world after I grew up, after I experienced mm -hmm. things, after my oppression was complete or more understood, when in fact that isn't true at all. Youth have been doing it since historically. And mm -hmm. they're just, you know, more of a pillar to set a reminder that you can create your own solutions and you are not the conditions that you live in or experience. Oh, oh my gosh. I love that so much. I mean, I got into youth activist work when I was really young and I was fortunate and it was through a job, right? So I know that, that WiMAC is paid and there's a stipend. And so that was kind of how I got started too in my whole career. It came with like being, I was 14. I was like, I really don't want to be home. <laughs> I need to make some money. And 
I got into a program that was similar. It was for girls, women and girls. And, I, and it was for a lot of first generation students of color who maybe were kind of feeling disempowered or had experienced racism, right? I grew up in the mission. I experienced racism from, even though there was a lot of Latino people, like the cops would harass me, you know? And that's an experience that a lot of us have. But I learned that it's young people who aren't yet surviving capitalism, right? who have a lot of power. And so I love that you are supporting young people. And my question for you is, what kind of young people um, is this program for? Absolutely. Um, well, I'm so happy to hear that you were able to find a bridge into the work that you're doing now, inspiring and uh, sustaining and fostering all these like amazing, you know, capable youths. Um, but we are currently recruiting um, Black, Brown, Asian Pacific Islander, um, and Latinx low-income students. Um, the, that's the main population that we aid as a whole in YMAC, but for our fellowship program, um, we are looking, or for our cohort program too, we are looking for um, that set population of people and we are paid. That is very much true. The youth are not going to do this work for free. We're done with that. We have all passed that. <laughs> yes, I love that. So even though it's not like a typical retail job where you're getting like an hourly wage, right, mm -hmm. whatever the minimum wage is usually, it's more of like you get paid for spending time doing this program, getting to not only express yourself, but also hear how other people talk about issues that students are also facing, even though they might be a different race, right? Mm -hmm. So just coming together to make your life a little better in the face of a lot of adversity and oppression, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. So I love that this is like, for me, that was my first job. I didn't know that that job that I had wasn't like a traditional job. And I'm so glad that I went and got that because it really put me on my path. And so I see YMAC as being like a, a doorway for that too, for students who might not know that they're activists, for students mm -hmm. who might not know that yet, right? And for students who do, but also for folks who want to take charge of their lives and stand in their power in their communities while also getting paid and hanging out with other cool people and learning from you, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much, that's, that's, that's it. So if y'all are interested, please hit me up, hit any, uh, anyone up at our Coleman and our YMAC team and we would love to learn more about you. And even if you decide not to join the cohort program or wait, we do have, again, bi-weekly meetings and we set up one-on-ones with our community organizers. So if you want to join the program later or join our summer program, which is also paid, then you have that opportunity right there. I love that. Okay, so YMAC is currently hiring right now and you mm -hmm. have a deadline. Can you remind me of the new deadline? The deadline is right now ASAP. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all, that's, we don't have a specific date for it. Um, my personal goal is I would like to get applications in by Friday or Monday, and we can set up interviews this, as soon as your application comes in. Um, but it is first come, first serve. We only have 10 spots, and the spots are already getting filled. So yeah. I only hold it for so long. I'd be well yes. student. Please. So like February 22nd, Monday. Yes. February 22nd. Got it. Okay. And my final question. So for folks who maybe are like, okay. I'm interested, but I don't want to commit yet, or I can't really commit. I'm still figuring out night school or whatever, right? Um, you said there's a summer program, and do you also hire in the fall? Yes. So um, we are trying to extend our cohort program um, into the fall. Um, but if not, we do have a fellowship program that extends into the fall, and the summer program lasts all summer. It is paid, and it's purely students learning. So you're getting paid to learn about the things that affect you or possibly inspire you. So awesome. And final, final, final question. All of this is virtual or in person? The majority of it will be virtual. Um, we are trying to find safe ways to meet in person. We do plan actions um, and we do have different events that are hosted in our current office in the Excelsior. But uh, we are working with the students' comfortability. We understand there's a lack of accessibility, getting places, or just the you know pure raw fear of this pandemic that we're going through. Yeah. So we are adapting to whatever is most comfortable for students. I love that. You're meeting students where they're at. I love that so much. Thank you so much for sharing about YMAC. And if you are interested in applying, I'll have all the info listed below. And I hope you all have a good day. Thanks again for joining. Bye. Thank you.